It took almost a decade for police to solve the high-profile murder of Queensland schoolboy Daniel Morecambe. His parents, Bruce and Denise, worked tirelessly to ensure the case stayed in the headlines until their son's killer was finally jailed last year. But the family is still fighting a legal battle, with Brett Peter Cowan appealing his conviction. Now an extraordinary spat between Queensland's top two judges is threatening to delay both court proceedings and the Morecambe's quest for closure. David Lewis reports. It's getting desperate. We need him back. <laughs> we want Daniel back. This is say they saw the teenager and a man at the stop. This has been a lengthy, complex and very protracted investigation. Compelling evidence has found beyond reasonable doubt Mr Cowan's guilt. This was supposed to be the end of Bruce and Denise Morecambe's long campaign for justice. More than a decade after their son Daniel was kidnapped while waiting for a bus on the Sunshine Coast, a jury had found serial pedophile Brett Peter Cowan guilty of his murder. A murderous sex offender was caught and exposed for his actions. Cowan was sentenced to at least 20 years behind bars, but the legal battle wasn't over. The Morecambe family is back in court as the man found guilty of murdering their young son Daniel in 2003 seeks to overturn his conviction. Last November, Cowan launched an appeal. Those proceedings were this week thrown into disarray after a stoush between two senior judges. These judges and lawyers and barristers need to realise that they're, they're talking about a young boy that was murdered, not, not arguments between themselves. Queensland's Chief Justice, Tim Carmody, was one of three judges hearing Cowan's appeal. But when the President of the Court of Appeal, Justice Margaret McMurdo, discovered he had met with child protection advocate Hetty Johnston, she questioned his impartiality in a series of fiery emails. I've been informed that earlier this week you met with Ms Hetty Johnston from Bravehearts. I'm deeply concerned about this. The judgments are not yet delivered either in his appeal against conviction or in the Attorney General's appeal against sentence. And in the circumstances, it is our respectful view that you should disclose immediately the fact of this meeting and what was discussed at it to both parties and afford them an opportunity to make submissions about it if they wish. An incredulous Justice Carmody hit back. Any suggestion that this would be sufficient to give rise to a reasonable apprehension of bias or prejudice is unsupported by precedent and utterly preposterous. If I'm in a court, I would address... Hetty Johnston says there's been a huge misunderstanding. And did you discuss the Cowan appeal? Uh, no way. I wouldn't, I wouldn't even presume to try to lobby a Chief Justice. I just wouldn't even do that as a layperson. And, you know, to, to assert, I guess, that the Chief Justice would allow me to do that is just an insult and it just goes to show how petty this all has become. The war of words became so heated, Justice McMurdo made the following request to court staff. I regret to inform you that following an extraordinary memorandum yesterday from the Chief Justice in relation to the Cowan case, I cannot sit with him again on any court. Please ensure in future that I'm not listed to sit with the Chief Justice. He has been copied into this email. The meeting between Hetty Johnston and Tim Carmody was listed in his public diary and an independent third party was present. Despite this, Brett Peter Cowan's legal team decided to file an application to have the Chief Justice disqualified from hearing their client's appeal. But in an extraordinary development yesterday, Tim Carmody removed himself, saying he did not want the court to become a Dickensian bleak house. Hetty Johnston was disappointed by the backdown, but says Justice Carmody didn't want to further delay the appeal. It was a selfless act. Um, on his behalf and I think you know we all owe him a great debt of gratitude for that and I think perhaps the rest of the um, justices who are engaged in this at least they're not all I know um, take a good look at themselves and just you know get out of the sandpit you know put your robes and your and your little hats on and get back to work. 
But the controversy is unlikely to disappear soon. Key members of the judiciary have been voicing their disapproval of Tim Carmody ever since he was appointed Chief Justice last June. They argue the former Chief Magistrate is too inexperienced for the role and was too close to the former LNP government in Queensland. He shouldn't be Chief Justice. He should um, uh, do the gracious thing and realise that all of this has been a horrible mistake and say that he wouldn't accept the appointment. Today there were fresh calls for his resignation. The fact is the Chief Justice said a couple of months ago that if he is occupying the position of Chief Justice made the position of the Supreme Court untenable or words to that effect, he would resign. The position is becoming increasingly untenable, particularly when the President of the Court of Appeal has now instructed court staff that she cannot and will not sit with him. Criminal lawyer and civil libertarian Terry O'Gorman also took a swipe at those who installed Justice Carmody in the top job. The previous Premier and Attorney General completely botched the appointment of the Chief Justice and we're now seeing the results of that, we're now seeing the situation completely unravel. But the LNP, now in opposition, is standing by its man. Chief Justice Carmody was uh, appropriately appointed, uh, he's been given a task to fulfil, he and all of the other judges have now got an obligation to make sure that their first priority is to deliver to all Queenslanders a, a great justice system. A word about the courts? Oh. Well, in relation to the courts, uh, there's separation of powers, but obviously there are serious issues down there and they need to resolve them. What's the mechanism for sorting it out now? Is there one? Uh, well, I think it's a matter for, for them to sort out, but I think uh, the public would, would share our views that it needs to be sorted out now. But what of the little boy lost amid the infighting? Bruce and Denise Morecambe just want to see this resolved. What is this all about? Is it about fair justice for Mr Cowan or is it the profile of certain legal eagles or is it in fact an angry spat between a couple of uh, judges and professionals in that industry that should know better? Uh, it better not be a game plan between the, you know, a spat between legal eagles because at the end of the day they're picking on the Morecams and we will win.